All right, what up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Another episode of the Crypto Breakdown. I am your host, Ryan Mehta. We're going to dive right into it today. Topic of the day, trend lines. Understanding how to find support, resistance, understanding where your trends are, exactly what point of the market it is that you're actually attempting to trade. Let's dive in. Let's get it. And of course, this video is for entertainment purposes only. I'm not a financial investor and I never advise you to invest in crypto in any way, shape or form. Thank you. So when we're talking about trend lines, it's super important to understand what your local lows are and what your local highs are. So if we come over here and we use this indicator called trend lines, if you go into indicators and you search trend and you see trend lines V2 by Lonesome the Blue, there's several ones by Lonesome the Blue, but you want just the trend line ones. There's multiple ones, so we're gonna check out several of these really quick. We're gonna check out trend lines. We're gonna check out trend directional helper. This is probably another one of my favorites. And if you just scroll through here, you can actually find a lot of really good trend line indicators. So you just gotta pick out the ones that you think are best and the ones that you like best. <laughs> And you guys can see right now, we got a lot going on in this chart. So we're gonna kind of go through these one by one. We're gonna turn them all off. We're gonna turn them all back on one by one. And we're gonna see which ones we actually like, which ones we wanna use. And we end up back on my favorite too. So you can see right here, right now, on the bigger, the bigger picture, we are in this macro downtrend. So if I come over here and I turn on trend lines V2, and I also turn on trend lines both by Lonesome the Blue. These are amazing, amazing indicators. So when I'm looking at a big picture of exactly at what point of the game we are actually in, I always like to come over here and tell people, guys, before we go back into another bull run, the first thing that has to happen is we have to break the macro downtrend. We look back over here, when the bull run started, Bitcoin made this crazy, crazy uptrend. And for the longest time, price came down, found support on the uptrend, and continue to push to the upside time and time and time again. We can see over here, we have three local highs that Bitcoin put in. If I grab my Elliott Wave tool, we're talking about structure. You can see we had a one, two, three, four, and five. Perfect Elliott Wave structure. Now we are working on the Elliott Wave structure to the downside. We have made our R1, two, three, four, more than likely our fifth, just like we went on the way up, we should see that same structure play out to the downside. And just like the fifth barely went above the third here, I would assume that the fifth on the way down will be most likely barely below the bottom of this third. You can see over here, we have our local low put in right there. I'm expecting us to put in one more local low before we start ascending to the upside. If I had to guess where bottom would be, these would be my two targets right here. That's calling for a $21,000 Bitcoin and that is calling for a $24,000 Bitcoin. So more than likely, if market structure plays out, that is going to be where we're going to see Bitcoin end up at. As far as trends go now, if we jump onto a smaller time frame, say the four hour time frame, now the charts start getting interesting. Now, if we're talking about the smaller time frames, you can actually see we have a lot going on. But what trend is most active right now? We have this downtrend and we also have this uptrend. So the downtrend seems like has been holding, but at the same time, the uptrend here has been holding. Because we put in a new local high up here, we can connect our trend from local highs. We have not yet broke this micro downtrend. Not quite yet. Technically, we're still on it from 28K to 30K. And now here at 33K, still finding support on that trend. So it's like we're in an uptrend, but we're also in the downtrend on the in the bigger picture. So we technically did break this uptrend here and we came down and we did not break it as far as on the four hour goes. Let's see what happens when we jump over to the one hour. Same thing on the one hour time frame. They're still trying to say that we are actually in this downtrend right now because we did not come in and put a new higher high in here. Since we're making lower highs, we're technically still in this downtrend. But at the same time, we're still making higher, higher lows over here. So we are still in this micro uptrend. So that's why I say right now for Bitcoin, as far as I'm concerned, this is a no trade zone right between 36,000. If we break above, sure, we can talk about going long. And if we break below 32,675, we can talk about going short. But for now, we're trapped in this no trade zone. And with the USA markets kind of on the verge of, you know, pulling back, not really sure which way that, you know, this can play out. It's just not worth it for me to go long. It's not worth it for me to go short, but these tools you can kind of just play around with. Well, I'll leave links for these down in the description. And now let's take a look at a few others real quick. So we'll turn off those two. We have none on. Let's take a look at, so this THD 
which I believe was that trend line diagonal, whatever, it places buy and sell orders based off of key levels. You can see it kind of marks out these zones. These are your sell zones. These are your buy zones down here. It'll give you some readings. Now, if we jump back onto like the one day time frame, which I thought was pretty cool with this one, for the most part, here's your buy signal right here at this bottom. You could have rolled that up quite a bit. Sell order right up here at this one, right before it went down. Sell order right here, letting you guys know when to buy, when to sell. The last time it gave you a buy signal was over here. Could have easily taken some profits. And if you notice, just like I'm kind of saying we're in this no trade zone. After this buy signal, there was real no confirmation that you wanted to be buying or selling. But for the most part, on the bigger picture, it really lets you know, um, as far as the one day time frame goes, some key areas that you should be buying and some key areas that you should be looking to sell. And that's the best thing about indicators. It's you always want to kind of go through and do your own research and back test them and see how accurate they really were. Uh, looks like right here in a downtrend, when the red line prints, you're in a downtrend. When the green line prints, you're in an uptrend. Not really a fan of the super trend daily. Now here, this black flags FTS seems to be pretty, pretty accurate. Um, it was calling this downtrend start right here when these lines crossed over. And so far it has us trapped in this major, major downtrend. So definitely bearish for sure. Now crypto turtle right up here telling you to close long entries. How sweet is this indicator? This one's really cool. I'm going to make another video on these indicators really quick too. Again, when it goes red, you're in a downtrend green, you're in an uptrend. We have just started again, another downtrend. So again, every indicator that I pull up for the most part is showing us that we are in a downtrend. Wow. Look at that one. So greens are downtrends indicating yet again on the one hour time frame. We are in this, you know, even in the micro downtrend, even though we are still trapped in the macro downtrend. So let's do a little recap for beginners. So if we jump over here on the one hour, and if you're not good enough to basically pinpoint local lows and local highs yourself, this trend line tool, this helper by Lonesome the Blue is amazing. Local high, local lows. In order to have a local high or a local low, you need to break the previous trend. So once price started to push up to the upside here, once this trend was broke right here, and by trend line being broke, I mean candles finishing below the actual trend line. And it's all in it, it's all left up to interpretation. Some people like to go off the bodies. Some people like to go off the candles. Some people like to go off the wicks. It just depends on how you like to place your trend lines. There's no real right way or real wrong way to do it because a trend is just that. It's a trend and it holds until it doesn't, just like a moving average, you know, rejects price or supports price until it doesn't. Nothing is ever going to be perfect. Nothing's ever going to play out 100% of the time. And you see right here, we have this downtrend started. Once the uptrend is broken, once candles started finishing below this red line, the first one I drew, you start a downtrend. Your downtrend is started until what? Until candles come up and break that downtrend. Once they break that downtrend, you go back to the previous lowest candle before that downtrend was broken. Whatever the lowest point was, that is your local low. Same thing when an uptrend, you're on that uptrend. When the uptrend is broken, you come back and you find the highest point before that uptrend was broken. And that is your local high. And down here is your local low. And you just kind of got to play with it. This was one part that really took me a long time to wrap my head around and figure out that like I was always trying to find that perfect candle. And then sometimes you, you have trends that go out like this and you're like, well, if that's my trend. How is that ever going to get broken? So sometimes you got to move them around. You got to realize that it's never going to be perfect. And you just got to do your best at, you know, making your best decision on where you think the trend is and when that trend is going to get broken. And then you can start getting into Elliott wave and structure and stuff like that. So do me a favor, guys. Let me know what indicators you guys like. Let me know if there's any cool indicators you guys are using. Drop comments below and let me know what your favorite indicators are. And I want to check them out. I want to make some content on them. You guys know me. I'm pretty, you know, anti indicators. But when it comes to indicators like this that are saying, hey, OK, this is a local low. This is a local high. This is a trend. These things help make you a better trader. When you're talking about moving averages, the 200 day, the 50 day, the 21 day, the 20 day, the 15 day, the 14 day, the so many guys, there's so many bad indicators. I think that's why 80 to 95% of people that try to trade and try to trade for a side gig or a side hustle or a living fail at it because they're using so much garbage TA and they're because they're listening to so much old school TA and so many old indicators that, yeah, maybe they were great for stocks back, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, but now market conditions change. Crypto is so much different than a stock. It's so much more volatile. It's so much more manipulated. There's no insider trading because it's not valued as a legal currency yet. 
completely different ball game. And that's why I think you need to adapt and you need to create your own trading style that works for this type of market. And if you don't, more likely than you need than anything, you need to just be a hodler because it's extremely hard to trade crypto and be profitable if you don't really understand the bigger picture and how things are actually being played out. All right, YouTube, that's a wrap on my trend line tutorial. I appreciate you guys so much. If you guys could do me a favor, drop a comment below. Let me know what indicators you guys are using. Let me know if there's anything I missed in this video. If there's any other indicators you guys want me to cover in future videos, everybody that goes out of their way to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I honestly, I can't thank you guys enough. I've done my best to give you guys the most honest and accurate TA this entire bull run. And I'm so glad that so many of you guys are making money and you guys are saving money and you guys are protecting those bank rolls, getting ready to go into the bear market, quite possibly a purgatory market. If we can see Bitcoin break below 28K, you will have the opportunity to DCA into all the altcoins you want. If these shillers keep shilling it and they keep it above 28k, it's going to be it, guys. This might be the lowest that we ever see these altcoins. So personally, I'm going to hold out a little bit longer. I'm going to wait. I'm DCAing into the coins that are hitting my targets of 80, 90, 95% off. And if I get the opportunity to go all the way down to 95, I will. If not, I'll have my bags packed very soon. So love you, squad. Thank you guys so much for stopping by the channel. Again, my name is Ryan Mata. Can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Peace. <music>